Hi everyone, it's Chris here with Red Wagon Craft, and in today's video we're going to be doing something slightly different. We traditionally do a project that's for your home, whether it be indoor or outdoor, but today we're going to be doing a kid's craft, and it's more, I call it a kid's science experiment. We're going to be growing our own seashell crystals. So, um, with this upcoming school year quickly approaching and things changing so much for how our kids are going to be learning this next year, I thought this would be a really cool idea to do um, and even provide some parents with a cool science experiment that they can do with their kids. So I do hope you enjoy this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe below. We do have new videos coming out each week. Uh, please visit us on our website also at rwcraft.com. There you're going to find so many other DIY projects as well as recipes and much more. So let's go ahead and get started and we'll uh, dig into this really cool experiment. Alright, so the material that you're going to need to make your seashell crystals will be seashells. I picked these up at the Dollar Tree, but you can also find them over at Hobby Lobby or Michael's, any craft store. I am going to use a kitchen tablespoon, also a measuring cup, which is one cup, a kitchen spoon. You will need two mason jars. This will be what you put your crystals in with your water. You will need borax powder and, of course, water. So uh, not a lot of materials needed and definitely does not cost very much at all. So um, let's go ahead and get things set up and let's move on to our first step. Okay, so we are up in my kitchen and what I have done so far is on my stove we need to take water and bring it to a boil. So uh, the solution that you're going to mix together is to every one cup of water you will then add three to four tablespoons of the borax powder. So I have measured out in my boiling water seven cups of water because if you're going to do one in seashell then you only need one cup of water. But we're going to put several seashells in each jar so I'm going to use several cups of water um, per my borax solution so we can mix it all together and grow our crystals with several uh, seashells in the jar. So I'm going to go ahead and I have seven cups of water on the stove boiling and as we wait for that to boil, let's go ahead and open up our borax. And I'm going to pour it into this bowl. So it's easier for me to measure out my tablespoons and then I can just always either discard it or put it into a baggie and use it for something different. So um, once that comes to our boil, we will add, with our one tablespoon measuring, um, we will add three to four tablespoons of borax per every one cup. So um, if we were to do four times seven, then that's what, 28 right there? That's how many that we will actually use. Okay. For our seashells, what we will do is we will put in our mason jars a few of these seashells each. I'm going to probably start out with about three because I want to make sure that I have enough of um, an area where the seashells, the crystals can grow around each shell. So when we do remove them from the water, so I'm only going to do a total of six seashells for this project. bottom of my glasses. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that they're spaced out at least enough that they will be able to form the crystals around the edges and so forth. And 
so now all we have to do is wait for our water to come to a boil, which it is almost boiling. So it looks like our water is finally boiling. <coughs> so what we're going to do is, I do want to mention something that I did read about uh, for this project, is that the reason why you want to use glass mason jars is because you want to have um, a container that you're pouring the water in that will cool the water the slowest way. Um, apparently, having it put into a glass mason jar um, is a very slow way for the water to cool down. You don't want it to cool down too quickly. So we're gonna, that's why you're using a glass mason jar. So turn off my burner and my water is boiling. So I'm gonna set it on my little heat pad there. I will take my borax powder and measure out one. Okay, so you have 28 tablespoons to seven cups of water. And what you will do is you're going to want to just stir this around really, really well. Looks like it's really cloudy looking, but that's quite all right. Because I am informed <laughs> from reading these steps that it is going to be cloudy. You want to mix it till it's totally dissolved, but it will have particles of uh, stirring, uh, floating around in the water, but that's okay because as the water settles, you will then go ahead and have the solution settle on top, and that's what I guess forms your crystals. That's from what I was understanding. Okay, so I'm going to measure out one pot of water. Very hot, so be careful. One, two. I'm going to put three cups of water in each of that, each of the jars. Three. There's our first one. And I'm putting my jar in my sink because. For one, the water is extremely hot because it just came off the stove, it was boiling, and I don't want it to be spilling all over my countertop. Um, you just want to be very, very careful as you're pouring it in there not to burn yourself. One. was I went ahead and um, faced out, took the spoon, and just made sure that my sea cells were not touching each other as much as possible because I want the, the size of the shells to form the crystals as well as inside of the shell. Um, so we will go ahead and set these to the side. We are going to allow everything to cool down. Uh, you're supposed to give it 24 hours of cooling down before you are um, able to come back and actually see them. But the really cool part is the kids get to actually see the crystals forming overnight and it's, it's just really neat and cool. So I will go ahead and allow these to set and cool and tomorrow we will rejoin each other, we'll take a look at those crystals and we'll see how they turned out. Welcome back everyone. So our crystals are fully formed and they turned out really, really cool. So what I did was I emptied out the water um, as much as possible out of each of the jars and now the crystals have formed on the bottom 
And so the shells are very difficult to get out. It's almost like they formed this adhesive. Uh, so you'll want to take a spoon and you're going to just scoop them out of there. And I'm going to show you what they look like once I get them all out. They turned out very, very cool. So here is the first two. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that last one out. It's really, really formed around those crystals. There we go. Oh, that looks so cool. And we'll go ahead and do the same for these. Ooh, those are a little difficult. Those ones I might have to bending my spoon. Ow. Okay, so we're going to stop there. <laughs> um, note to self, we're going to have to figure out a way to be able to get the crystals off the bottom. Um, but they have really, the borax had just formed so many crystals around it. So we'll just leave those right there to the side. But I will show you the ones that I was able to get out. And it also could be that maybe they were placed too close together, and whenever that happens, that automatically will, um, you know, have the crystals form around them, which is what's making it so difficult. But I'm going to show you what this has looked like, what it looks like so far. So here are the crystals. They turned out very, very cool. Um, as you can see, they formed all throughout the entire centerpiece of the seashell. And so not so much on the other side. I'm sure that if we had a way of hanging this, then it probably would have formed all on the other side as well. But they all look very cool. They all turned out the same way. I often wondered also if, I wonder if we put dye in with this, if they would have formed a different color of crystal. So I don't know. I guess it's something that you can always experiment and try it with different ones. Um, but I think this is something that would be really fun with your children. Um, and they would really get into it. Very cool STEM projects for this upcoming school year, or even in the summer, just something to get them going and excited about um, science. So I hope you enjoyed this project. Very cool. Um, the inside of my glass, I will let you know, is probably ruined because the crystals are all along the bottom. So probably make sure that whatever mason jar you're going to use, you don't want to ever use again. Um, but uh, I'm going to try some different things to see if I can get it off at the bottom there. But um, again, I hope you enjoyed this project. Thanks so much for watching. Um, come back and see us again soon. We do post two videos every week. You can also visit our website at rwcraft.com. Uh, you'll find so many other projects, um, videos, so much more there, recipes. Uh, and please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Pinterest and like and subscribe below. Thanks so much and have a great day.